ladies and gentlemen, let us do our melee comparison for Legion. Obviously, these kind of videos can prompt a really negative response because there's obviously going to be things I say are bad. But bear in mind, it's entirely subjective. I look at every single spec as if it was going to be my main spec throughout the course of Legion and more than likely something I was going to be raiding on and doing all kinds of good content with. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. If you are a more casual player who logs in every now and again, this might not even apply to you in many ways. But it's certainly something I think to consider. We are mainly looking at gameplay here. Yeah, I have the opportunity to put in literally hundreds of hours. I take these kinds of lists really seriously because it can affect a lot of decisions for a lot of players. And honestly, this is the best gameplay comparison I can do compared to when I'm playing all the different specs, which ones I clearly found more enjoyable to play compared to those that I found absolutely awful to play. In that respect, then, I've split them into three groups. So group one is going to be the worst of the worst. These are the specs that I just could not find a point where I thought this is really, really, really good. This is something I would want to play for many, many hours on end. I could sit through a long raid playing this. I could do lots of mythic dungeons doing this. All this kind of content. Those are the worst ones that I just would not enjoy doing at all. The middle group are the specs that kind of have some flaws, but are actually really good at the same time. They're actually much more positive. Overall, the melee experience has actually been really nice for me. So what I'd like to say is the middle group have some flaws, but they're just not outstanding. And then the third and final group will, of course, be the ones that I just enjoyed thoroughly, constantly, all the way. Every time I played them, I wanted to make my video on them, and then come back and play them afterwards. And as I said, this list compromises several hundred hours of gameplay in order to reach my conclusions, okay? So let's get into it then. Let's start with the worst of the worst. Firstly, the Rep Paladin. I don't know what was going on with the ideas behind the Rep Paladin. It's certainly not as bad as a vanilla Rep Paladin, the auto attacks and all that kind of stuff, but their talent system is one of the absolute worst I've ever seen. It's so dull from start to finish, whether you just want things to passively cleave, whether you want things to just do a little bit of extra damage, do you want things to stack damage? Nothing here is of interest. They basically all just replace the same button and that's about it. At Consecration replaces Execution Sentence, so you can get Final Verdict, which is just flat damage buffs. All these things are just massively uninteresting. And, for, and what's really gutting, and really gutting for me, is the Rep Paladin was such a whirlwind of fun for a long time. Now, I'm not going to deny that these, there were some RNG elements, which kind of almost worked themselves out towards the end of WADs, but this version compared to the WAD version is just so massively out of place. If it wasn't for Divine Steed providing some really interesting riding your mount through combat, I would be so utterly bored constantly playing this one, which is really sad. Next in the worst of the worst is the Survival Hunter. Probably no surprise to any of you. The Survival Hunter seems like such a huge missed opportunity. All they did was grab a little less interesting elements from other specs and try and jam them into a, what they call a new melee spec. I almost fear that they were afraid that people needed to have a full expansion to warm to the idea of survival. However, in my opinion, it would have been a good idea to say, here's a new spec, let's have fun with it. Nothing here seems to have fun. And they almost broke into having fun with it by going down the engineer roots initially they had all the different kinds of bombs that was very cool but they changed it back a little bit they reneged on those those ideas and it kind of feels like an old bm hunter i mixed in with a bit of an arms warrior mixed in with a bit of a dk but none of the really good things it's got the functionality and the practicality there but overall this just doesn't click. There's no points at which I'm like, this is really cool. It's very sterile. You're building up your mongoose bites, and then you're kind of pressing your artifact ability at the end, and that's about it, and then you're rinse and repeating the process. I'd love to say I had some fun on survival, but it just never happened. I can play it just fine, and everything works, and it, it, it's really important that you understand that although I'm saying these specs, these specs are bad, they're actually all practically working and functional. There's no doubt about that. They'll all work and do the damage you need to do, but am I going to have fun doing it? And that, the answer is that is no. Next on that list, then, is the Arms Warrior. No matter what they seem to do with the Arms Warrior, they just can't land for me at a point where it's really, really fun. And it's just sucks i mean but there's something to bear in mind here i'm not a fan of the colossus smash window and the utter reliance on colossus smash to make arms worthwhile even taking the talents that extend your colossus smash like titanic might in order for it to not be such a big deal don't make up for the fact that sometimes you're just without it and you know you're 
fundamentally so weak sauce without it. You're terrible. Even the efforts they've gone to with Warbreaker, the artifact's ability to make Colossus Smash more readily available, and so you shouldn't run into as many issues, it just doesn't work out for me. At 110, it is better with the artifact trees unlocked, the increased chances to get Colossus Smash, but the fact of the matter is, sometimes it just doesn't work. And the more and more I played it at 110 and ended up in the execute phase, which the what arms warriors are uh, warriors are the king of execute, and just being sat there without Colossus Smash, it's just painful. It's painful and annoying and irritating, and I just can't get behind this spec being so one-dimensional in its playstyle. Even the changes to Tactician, so we weren't just slam fishing for Colossus Smash anymore, didn't help. It just felt like I was waiting and waiting, and then sometimes it would be fun, but ultimately you either end up in a scenario where you have Colossus Smash up all the time, in which case it's fine, and it seems to play like a normal spec should do, or you don't have it, and it just feels like you're just a waste of time being there altogether, and it's not fun in the least. The last in the worst specs, then, is a class, and not just a spec. It is the rogues. Uh, I was a main rogue uh, throughout most of Worlds of Draenor. Got 99th percentile on my rogue in raiding, and I was really happy with it. The rogue in Legion, at no point for me, has gone, as any of the specs, gone better. They seem to have gone backwards, every single one of them. There have been changes, we even have a new named spec called Outlaw, which again, similar to Survival, if they were going to go with this pirate-themed spec, they should have gone whole hog with it, instead of basically rewording combat and changing the names of a couple of spells, and adding in one cool ability, like Roll, of, Roll the Bones is a very, very cool ability, it absolutely is. But... It just doesn't have the fun of the flavor or even the depth that combat does in WAD. Without the without the ability to really use combat insight or any of those abilities, you're just basically whacking the things and it's just less fun. It seems to have gone backwards. The changes to sub with the new Shadow Dance, I just can't get behind. It's nowhere near as satisfying or as fun as the old Shadow Dance. And Assassination just doesn't make sense to me. The overemphasis on bl bleeds for an assassin just doesn't fit. It feels very broken. It feels like they had all these spells left over uh, that they'd taken away from the other two specs and just started jumbling, jumbling them into there and taking out some of the cool things like the execute phase dispatch spam or even the procs. With all that missing, it just feels very generic, although it is much quicker than it used to be. That's not enough to take away from the fact that this spec doesn't feel like it's grown at all. It's fallen behind. So that is the end of the worst specs for me. Those are the specs that I didn't particularly enjoy much at all. Although I got some fun out of the Outlaw Rogue. It was never something that I would possibly raid on due to the nature of it. Let's now move into the specs that are actually fine. They're actually really good. Uh, they just have... They're not amazing, in my opinion. They're not going to blow your dick off or anything along those lines. So at least we get a bit cheerier now. So first up is the Feral Druid. Real surprising. But if this was the list for Ward, I believe we did make a list for Ward, Feral Druid would have been in the previous section. It would have been one of the worst ones ever. I just did not enjoy it. The new Feral Druid... Although it's only had minor changes, are changes that I really, really enjoy. And have absolutely been a ton of fun. It still has some really odd stuff in there that doesn't need to belong. But overall, I've enjoyed coming back to my Feral Druid. Its issues lie really in its AoE style. Just doesn't make any sense. And it, there's so much more opportunity here to really go heavy-handed with what a cat is like. And that's always been the drawback for me. is that It never feels like what a cat feels like in association to even if we look at lions and tigers or even your pussy cat your bedroom it just doesn't feel quite like that the scratches and stuff do make sense but it should be far more furious and intense and wild and uh and more much more interesting perspective to play but what it does it does well and it does it better than i've ever seen it next up is going to surprise many of you it is the fury warrior oh man the Fury Warrior is something I have been so hyped for throughout most of my Legion testing. I leveled it to 110 three times, man. Three times. Even when doing the arm stuff, I got so fed up, I switched back to Fury to get it leveled up. So what happened? Recent changes have taken away the raw brutality that was Fury. The best thing I enjoyed about Fury, and you can look at this even in the alpha videos, the alpha previews I did of Fury, was that it was so raw, so brutal, so nasty. Rampage was really satisfying to get out there, and the old carnage and all this good stuff was really satisfying. Recently, though, they've kind of made it more clinical and practical, which for many will be a good thing. 
But for me, it took away that brutality, particularly the changes to Meat Cleaver, which made it far more clinical and more sort of one, two, one, two button press process, which is something I really did not enjoy. It's also been, it's heavily global cooldown locked now because they seem so intent on making this ability Furious Slash work. And it just really took away from that raw intensity that I love from Fury Warriors. But remember, I'm a big fan of the Wrath of the Lich King Fury Warrior, which was just pure meat and gristle and bone-churning nastiness um, compared to the more like the Colossus Smash-centric that we saw throughout Mr. Pandaria and all that kind of stuff. So there's nothing wrong with it. This is what I'm telling you in this section. There's nothing wrong with it. You're going to have a ton of fun with this thing, but I loved it so much more before the more recent changes. And that's something that I find really quite saddening about a spec that I was well on board for playing. Next up then is similarly is the Havoc Demon Hunter. Uh, yeah, the DPS Demon Hunter. The DPS Demon Hunter is such a spectacle to behold. Such a spectacle spectacle to behold. And as I said in my demonstrations of it is it's so hard to dislike it. It really is. Everything makes so much sense. But for me, there's only really one talent setup that I enjoy playing for any extended period of time. Uh, Metamorphosis is so cool looking yet underwhelming to actually use that it just drops it down to make me feel like, oh, you could have just gone that little bit further and made it so much cooler. And it's already so fucking cool, but the obvious signs are there that you could have just made it that much better. But it is good. It's so much better than when it first launched. It just has some absolutely derpy talents setups and you've got to remember from a raider's perspective there are opportunities to uh, maximize your class you're going to be taking that means that there are several ways of the Davic Demon Hunter playing that I really do not enjoy. I do not enjoy the bounding away and animation cancelling and trying to fell rush away and get back and all this kind of stuff. Those kind of things just take away from what is absolutely a spectacle to behold. It's such a glorious, glorious display when it's in motion. I love watching the Demon Hunter in action and will absolutely thoroughly enjoy my raid mates playing them next to me. I just don't want to be the guy behind the wheel. I would love to see them driving it. I'd just rather not be the one behind the wheel. Uh, but I think this one overall, although it's in my list in the middle, I'm pretty sure this thing is going to be a big thumbs up from plenty of plenty of people. So that does bring us to the end of the ones that I really disliked. And I'm sure some of you are noticing an entire class is missing. <laughs> well, three classes are actually missing. So spoiler alert for what I absolutely adored. So made it into the top list for the first time ever. Class clear spec I have never enjoyed was the Enhancement Shaman. What an absolute joy to play. An absolute joy to play. It has a couple of naff talents that are risky, uh, may not be interesting, but Jesus Christ, it not only has all the spectacle of the Demon Hunter, and probably not as good, but close. Close. But the actual playstyle and the sheer choices in playstyle that are on offer with the Enhancement Shaman's talent system is so fucking good. It's so good that you can choose to play an Enhancement Shaman from any era or a brand new one. And I think that's something that's so difficult to achieve. Their talents aren't garbage to the point where they're all just sticking extra shit on the bars. There's one talent like that. The rest of them are taking talents that you ordinarily are spells that you ordinarily leave to the dust or maybe have never keybinded in your life and saying, let's mix that into the rotation if you want. If you want to pick that up, you can do that. If you don't want to do that, you can do this. It's a wonderful marriage of practical, efficient design and absolute spectacle so that when you're looking at your screen for many many hours you're totally enjoying it next up then was the wind walker monk what a surprise for me again i always enjoyed the wind walker particularly mr pandaria didn't enjoy it as much not that i thought it was bad in wallet of draenor but the legion version is so good a lot of people responded saying uh, hit combo and all that isn't that interesting once you get used to it that's okay. As a good player, we're going to get used to pretty much anything this game can throw at us, right? There's it's only a certain level that Blizzard can take something. But that mechanic in and of itself is really rewarding when you get it right. Especially when you get it right for many, many minutes and maximize everything. And the sheer weight it adds to every single spell press. There's so many specs. If we look at Rhett, none of them spells that Rhett presses feel satisfying or interesting. None of them. But the fact that Windwalker has this huge array of spells, 
all with different timers, all doing different things, but then adds in the combo of increasing your damage by alternating between them. You fit the class fantasy perfectly. You fit the class fantasy. I said this in the individual video, is if you look at any of the old Kung Fu movies, the old Bruce Lee movies, where they're fighting multiple guys, and they're kind of hitting one and moving to another and doing different abilities all the time, they have fucking nailed that with the simple stuff like the changes to the spinning crane kick, getting bonuses from playing in that manner. The final change, or hopefully the final change to Storm, Earth, and Fire works really well. It works absolutely fine. It's as interesting it's different but as interesting as the first version that we have in wad i find it perf perfectly fine it's much better than the stupid alternative they came up with and frankly i just care so much more about playing the spec because of all the different balances the talent tree is tremendous so many different choices in there that all make sense there's no repetition that seems pointless only a couple of real loser ones like chi orbit which is fucking garbage but you're gonna have to flick through here to find things that you don't enjoy you're going to have to actively seek them out. And that's pretty awesome. Because you've got to bear in mind, everybody in the game has to have the opportunity to play these specs. You can't have specs that are so stupidly difficult and maximized that only a few people can play them. That's totally unfair, because the vast majority of players aren't up to that level. So it's understandable that occasionally, even in the best of the best, there are some talents that just don't quite fit. On to the last one, then. <laughs> There's an entire class missing, and it has two specs. <laughs> good god did they nail it with the death knight unholy and frost are just so good to play everybody who looked at the death knight when it first launched in legion and saw that those bars were empty were instantly in uproar this is bullshit stop the prune and then we got to play it and it was like this good. This is good. This 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 I can live with. Unholy and Frost. I would slightly give the edge to Frost because of just the fantastic and cool spells like the Frost Scythe, summoning in Syndragosa, the finally fixed animation on doing it. Good god, man. It's so cool. It's brutal. It's heavy. It also has its technical and it also has its ability to do well with it, which is a big factor for me. Is can I make, can I use skill to make, get better results out of this? And the Death Knight can in spades. It can absolutely, absolutely do that. The very awesome abilities are wonderfully animated, which means watching you, watching you play even when you get absolutely used to playing it is still cool. There's not really going to be a point when you Glacial Advance, or you Frost Scythe, or you summon in Syndragosa, or you start popping all the zits as unholy, when you start that wonderfully satisfying sound that comes from doing it, and timing your death and decay, making death and decay interesting. Good God, for so many years, you've got to remember I was a main DK throughout Cataclysm, got some world firsts on that, to make death and decay interesting? Jesus Christ. And it's only a simple way of doing it, but if you pull it off correctly, holy shit is it good. Holy shit is it good. I have been nothing but impressed with the Death Knight, both of the DPS specs. Absolutely, utterly astounded. And the best thing about this and why it makes my number one spot in this list is because if I was playing this thing full time and suddenly Unholy was better or Frost was better, I wouldn't give a shit. I wouldn't give a shit. I'd be like, no worries, dude. I can play that for fucking hours, and I'll have fun with it, and I can keep improving on it, and I can get better and better with it. I like playing with all the different talents. All of them seem to have some way of maximizing them, making them better, even if Soul Reaper to Defile, to maximizing Shadow Infusions and making them work for me, to Castigator, to Clawing Shadows. All these things just make so much sense. They look cool. They feel cool to use, and it just wouldn't matter. For me, my number one pick of the melee of Legion, based on the beta right now, barring any significant changes, is the Death Knight. Ladies and gentlemen, there's my melee list. I hope that uh, doesn't drive some people too crazy. I hope you understand my choices. If you do want to have further details on my thoughts on these, the individual videos are all up in this playlist. You can click them or, skif or sift through them. All right, guys, you can find them on the front page of the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.